And so in our previous video, we showed the step-by-step -step examination of the cardiovascular system. In this video, I'm going to examine the cardiovascular system as though I were a candidate in an exam setting. And so, for, usually for OSCEs, we have 10 minutes to examine our patients, present our findings, and then answer relevant questions which will be asked. And so as a candidate, I'm going to begin the exam. Hello, sir. My name is Kofi Amwako. I am a foreign trade medical student who has been asked by my superiors to examine me. The examination will involve me looking intently at you sometimes. I may be touching certain parts of your body, and if necessary, I may be listening to your chest with a stethoscope. It is not going to be a painful procedure, although it may be uncomfortable. Please feel free to stop me if you feel the need to do so. Do I have a permission, please? Thank you. Please, can you take off your shirt? Thank you. Please permit me to elevate the head end of the bed. Sir, can you please give me your hand? Thank you. Sir, can you please oppose your sound like this for me? And then the next one, another one. Okay, thank you, sir. Please, do you have any pain in your shoulder joint? Yeah. Sir, please, at this point, I would like to check his blood pressure. I should carry on. Thank you. Sir, can you please look to your left? Please, do you have any pain in your abdomen? This part? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can you please look at me? Please look down for me. 
look up, sorry. Kindly look up. Okay. Look down. Look down. Can you please show me your mouth? Inside of your mouth. Please lift your hand up. Thank you. Please, do you have any pain in your chest? Can you please turn to your left? Please turn to your Can you please sit up for me? Breathe in. Out. Breathe in. Out. In. Out. Can you please lie down for me? Thank you, sir, for allowing me to you. Please, I would like to present my findings to my superiors. Pause the video. Examining my patient, I'm going to present the patient as though the patient has heart failure. But you know in this patient, he doesn't have heart failure. So I'll start my presentation this way. I just examined a middle-aged man who looked chronically unwell and was in some respiratory distress evident by clearing of the inner leg side and the use of accessory muscles of breathing. On examination of the hand, there was no clapping, there was no peripheral cyanosis, the capillary flow time was less than 3 seconds and there were no other peripheral stigmata suggestive of infective endocarditis. The radial pulse was 98 beats per minute. It was regular and of good volume. The arterial wall was not palpable and then the radial pulse was not collapsing. There was no radio radial or radio femoral delay. The BP, as I was told, was 130 over 18 millimeters of mercury. The jugular venous pressure was not visible and even on hepatojugular reflux was not visible and so was not elevated. The patient looked mildly pale and mildly enteric. 
oral health was satisfactory and there was no central cyanosis. On examination of the chest, there were no obvious chest wall deformities, no surgical scars, and then there were no scarification marks. There was no visible precordial activity, but the apex bit was located in the fifth left intercostal space, anterior axillary line. There were no non uh, throats uh, palpated, no hips palpated. Hassans 1 and 2 were present and normal in all cardiac zones. There was esoteric head, no other sounds. The patient had fine inspiratory by basal palpitations with mild sacral edema, and then there was pedal edema to the level of the mid chin. All peripheral pulses were present and normal. Then I come to they ask me questions. What is your most likely diagnosis? And I tell them that my most likely diagnosis is congestive heart failure, probably secondary to the following, either hypertensive heart disease or coronary artery disease or dilated cardiomyopathy or high output failures. If it is not heart failure, it could be chronic liver disease, decompensated chronic liver disease. It could as well be a chronic kidney disease. Then. Usually, the questions that will follow, I mean, this is some investigations you want to do for these patients. And I tell them that for the investigations, I want to group them into diagnostic investigations and then supportive investigations. Since I'm thinking of heart failure, the first thing I would like to do is a plain chest radiograph, looking for signs of pulmonary edema and then cardiomegaly. And so, some of the signs include alveolar edema, which will manifest as back wing appearance. And so, you see some higher opacifications there. Then, Kelly B lines, which, might, which indicates interstitial edema. Cardiomegaly, I'm looking for a cardiothoracic ratio of more than 0.5. And then I may see dilated upper lip vessels. And then there may be an infusion, either unilaterally or bilaterally. Again, I was going to do an ECG, a 12 week ECG, looking for indicators for left ventricular failure. The ECG may also show me signs of hypertensive heart disease like left artery deviation, left ventricular hypertrophy, and a secondary repolarization. And since ischemic heart disease is the most common cause of heart failure, the ECG may show me ischemic changes like inverted T waves and then ST elevations or depressions. Then I also want to do an echocardiogram, which will help me group the heart failure, whether it is a heart failure with um, preserved ejection fraction or a heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. I also want to do, if necessary, a B type natriuretic peptide. Then, for my supportive investigations, I may want to do a full blood count because anemia may worsen the heart failure. Since I'm thinking of CKD as a differential, I want to do a BE creatinine, looking for elevated creatinine levels. Which one elevated may be a chronic kidney disease or an acute kidney injury from the heart failure. I would also want to do a analysis looking for evidence of renal damage. Then I would want to do other cardiovascular risk factor screens like fasting the big profile. I would want to do um, HbA1c looking for diabetes. Again, since I'm thinking that it could be chronic liver disease, I would also want to do a liver function test. How would you manage this patient if this patient came acutely to the ER? So I'll first admit the patient and then do a quick primary survey, make sure that the airway is patent and then the breathing is continuous and the circulation is managed um, appropriately. Then I'll check the SPO2. If it is less than 94%, I'll want to put on oxygen and pop up in bed. Then I'll want to start IV fluosemide to dry the patient up and then treat the underlying cause. Thank you.